Welcome back to the Growing Band Director Podcast. This is episode number 137, grade two music for festival. This is part one. It's going to be happening uh, for the next five weeks as so, grade one and grade two. If you haven't listened to grade one, part one, that happened last week. That was episode number 136. I'm here with Terry White. Terry, thanks for being here and doing this with us. Oh, looking forward to it. It's great pieces on this list. So we both believe people should be going to festivals. If there's a festival close by, like a lot of people go to marching band competitions or jazz band festivals. And like, those are all important or they bring their winter guard or winter percussion, but like, then they don't bring their concert band somewhere. So like what, if, if we're trying to push people to do this and they're reluctant to, what are the, some reasons why they might be reluctant to do it? And then why should they do it? I think it's the insecurity. Um, especially I, I think in one instance at a jazz festival, where a band had never participated before and they came and when they showed up, they didn't have a drum set and they didn't have a bass amp. Well, they had never been, they didn't really know what was mm-hmm. provided, what wasn't. Um, if you're taking your middle school kids and the focus is get them there, perform regardless of what the outcome is and get them home. We all know anything could happen. Oh, Mr. White, I left my trumpet back at the school or I can't find my black socks, you know, all that stuff. If you do that when they're younger, makes life a lot easier at the high school. It doesn't mean that won't happen. It just chances are it won't happen as often. Um, So the aspect of going to a festival, Mm -hmm. um, having somebody come up and talk to your band in a clinic situation, um, you know, middle school kids can get a little weirded out by that. Um, And you're going to get some feedback. I mean, I certainly have plenty of feedback um, from festivals that I went to, went home, had to do a lot of homework. Um, I think we went to the UNH festival. Stan Heading used to have a, an eight band invitational and Dr. McGinnis was one of the um, adjudicators and we did some pretty significant music. I, I thought we were doing pretty well until I listened to the recording and basically he handed my head to me. And a couple months later, we went to a festival in, in uh, Toronto. And when they turned around, they introduced the judges. Donald McGinnis was sitting up in the back, just sort of waving at me. I'm so happy I went home and did my homework because, you know, I thought I was cooking. So I got some feedback that basically fell on me, not, not on the kids. So, so in this six part series, we're going to have over 50 pieces that are grade one and grade two. Again, if you have a band that's grade three and grade four, the grade twos are great for you as well. Um, and if you've already picked your festival program, maybe you'll use some of these, or maybe you'll put them on a list, um, for next year. So, um, here's why we're presenting all of this information. Make sure you have high standards for what pieces you let onto your students concert programs. Keep listening until you find what fits them the best. Customize each and every program you give them like it was prescribed, especially for that group of kids. If a piece is really cool, but does not fit them now or for them to grow into shortly, don't use it right now. Don't do it because you like it. Do it because it's right for the kids. These segments will be broken up into three programs, a march, a ballad, and a final piece, but you can mix and match with any of these pieces that fit your band. If you really like a piece, put it on a list with some notes so that when it fits your band, you want to use it on a program, you have it available. If you think a piece is good for your kids in the next year or so, start a concert set list for a little further down the line. All of these pieces are super cool. In grade two and two and a half, cues are very common, but there's a wide range of difficulty within each grade level. So choose for your band, not the number. The pieces are fairly short. And I can honestly say the composers today, especially for middle school level and younger high school or less experienced high school, they're really getting it done. When I started to teach in the 70s, it was grade one and then immediately went to the high school level pieces. There wasn't much in the middle ground. Mm-hmm. Um, and today, it's, it's, they're more fun to play. They're interesting. And they know how to write for that level um, and orchestrate for that as well. Percussion is definitely more interesting. Um, so this is just some great composers here. One of the, one of the, so the first piece we're going to do is by one of the more, one of my favorite composers of this grade two level. This is a grade two and a half by Laura Estes called Kvetchers. Um, again, episode number 105, I had Laura on for a whole episode with some of her music and her teaching, um, things uh, I wrote first year slapstick comedy. This is B flat major funny March hints of Slava by Bernstein. If you don't know Slava, it's got like the nana, nana, boo, boo in muted trumpets half step xylophones and seven percussion parts. It's it's like hearing music that makes you laugh is so refreshing. And there's some interesting things like, um, well, trills for flutes and oboe, easy 16th notes. Um, the, cl- the clarinet one part is a solid grade two, but uh, clarinet two is definitely uh, more attainable. 
low brass have interesting but attainable melodies. There's a quirky six eight couple of measures she throws in there, mm-hmm. but very doable. Um, you can tell that Laura was a, a longtime teacher. Mm-hmm. You, these composers, when when they've been in the classroom, you can tell. Um, this is definitely a solid grade two fun to play. And I think some publishers might even push it a little higher. It's a two and a half for sure. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, you were talking about, what were you talking about when we listened to this? Oh, the chromaticism, like the ability to teach chromatic notes quickly. Yeah. I had a discussion with several of my editors when I was at Midwest. We talked about grade level um, and each publisher is a little different. Um, some are more liberal. Some are like, no, we advertise this as the top note and it can't be one half step higher. Um, when it comes to say brass range, you know, you can't rush that. They'll get there in due time and rhythms you can teach, but again, over time, but you can teach G sharp to a trumpet player in five minutes. And even if he had to write the fingering in. So the chromaticism really isn't going to make the, the piece more difficult. I think. Yep. And um, for a lot of high school teachers out there, this grade two stuff, especially the two and a halves, are really good things to be doing if it fits your band any time in the year. Sometimes beginning of the year, sometimes end of the year. Like th- that would be a great funny mark. If you're looking for something, mm-hmm. but you can't play Slava, like the original Bernstein or even the Robert Longfield version of Slava, mm-hmm. like here's a grade two and a half Slava. That's great. Well, I think also we've talked about this with uh, some of the episodes about jazz band. Put some things in your folder to have and you can have them there year after year this would be a great piece to have you might take it out one rehearsal just review it and you know you bands always get those last minute calls and we sometimes have to turn them down because we're in the middle of you know concert preparation yeah. you know from a pr standpoint that's that's not always great so you have a couple things in the folder we can whip right out and play at a public performance yeah she's good at writing little timpani solos too there was that timpani solo yeah. that like came out of nowhere and then the accent was on the end of two you know, that's like, it's a, it's a different skill set. Um, all right. So if, uh, the, this program we put together, that would be the opener. The second piece is from the great, um, salvation is created. This one's arranged by Michael Brown. I've actually used this one personally, um, classic band repertoire and E flat major there's timpani suspended symbol and chimes, which I had, I have all my kids play the chime part, but on mallets, because it's literally the same four bars a bunch of times. And that's it. Um, phrasing dynamics. I mean, in the middle of it, I feel like it's the original piece. Yeah, and it's a relatively short piece. Mm-hmm. And Michael Brown is, is a great arranger, a lot of pop music and so forth. He's he's definitely um, an excellent player, an excellent writer that I think students should be playing, and yeah. especially in the sense that it's not a pop tune. All right, here, Salvation is Created, arranged by Michael Brown.
couple underrated things about that piece. One, you have the mo- uh, a couple moments for woodwind choir where it's just the woodwind playing, and then when the brass comes in, it's full band. But also, like, you ever put a kid back on Tiffany and say, "Okay, now do an exposed roll," and they sound like hot garbage, mm-hmm. right? So, like, take the time to put a kid on there and make sure they know how to do a correct roll, at least for their age level, so it doesn't sound like they're trying to do a snare drum roll. Because snare drum roll, you have to press more into the drum, whereas timpani roll, you need to think about the bounce and getting more resonance on that. Well, and I, I think too, for middle school kids, how many bands are playing the hand-me-down timpani from the high, the high school and they might work, they don't work, you can't find parts. And I remember in, in my situation uh, at Cape Elizabeth, our, our drums are a disaster. And I went to the principal and, you know, hoping that we hit megabucks one day and buy a set. Of, and when she asked how much they cost, you know, that ended that discussion <laughs> quickly. Um, and she came to me later in the year and said to the parents association, not the boosters, the school association, they bought one drum. The next year they bought another and they did it over, over time. And it was great. My kids, you know, they would love to get play a piece like this and just get into the mm-hmm. use of that timpani rather than to be the, the table up back that everyone throws their stuff on. And if you do this piece, the chimes cannot be loud enough. Like the chimes can be a double forte with the whole band. Yeah. It's cause that's, that's the church bells. That's what you need. Right. Um, I was also going to mention, you were talking about drums that don't work people who, if they want percussion uh, ways to fix drums and re- recoup stuff, episode 121 with Jackson Smith. We did lots of like re- refurbishing your percussion stuff and figuring out what you like and all that. So that's a great ballad. I love that piece. All right. So the third piece on this one with Kvetchers and Salvation is Created would be Terracotta Warriors by Scott Watson. This was recommended to us by Tim. Thank you, Tim. This is percussion focused. So don't do this unless you have, you know, a strong percussion section. Um, piccolo or flute solo at the beginning. It's slow, fast. It's like battle like, right? Uh, terracotta, that would, would that, that would mean uh, Italian. Is that, that's Italian, like right? Clay tile type. Yeah. Um, um, highly doubled and low parts, and it's a super catchy melody. It's got some grace notes on the woodwinds. And again, middle school students haven't been exposed to that, and you don't want to make a big project out of it. Right. But um, wide variety of accessible rhythms that are notated well, that's important. Um, sometimes some of the notation can mislead the kids. They don't quite figure out. They may learn it by ear. Yep. We don't want that. Um, it's a bit longer than some grade two pieces at yeah. four and a half minutes. But well worth it, I think. Well, and I wanted to point, if you did this, these three as a program, Kvetcher's is slapstick comedy. And then you have Salvation is Created, which has a religious context, but it's very emotional and not notes and rhythms. And then this one is programmatic, a little bit longer, um, aggressive, battle-like. Like you've hit a, like a wide range of emotions through this concert. I, you know, If you have the the band that comes along that doesn't have a ton of percussionists, you could pull some kids out of the winds because the accessory parts are very, very doable. Yep. All right, here is Terracotta Warriors by Scott Watson. There's also a great opportunity to teach cut time because the, the, you know, about two thirds way through that piece, the piece goes into like kind of a halftime feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So then we are going to start our second set here with the March, which when I asked Tom Lazat in my current job, I said, I need a March that I know they're going to be able to play without even thinking. He said, Winchester March by John Edmondson. It's in B flat two, four simple short March that uses melody, harmony, counter melody, baseline. Very well distinguished, um, those parts. Well-written flute and clarinet parts that sound harder but are not. 
has a tempo change. So it's, uh, it's goes slower instantly and then, um, speeds up again, works on crescendos and decrescendos in many spots. Yeah. I've done this several times and, uh, used it with my sixth grade band, which was second year players and they loved it. It worked really well because you don't need to take a ton of time to put together. If I recall, I think there's a couple of chromatic notes I had to remind uh, kids. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, the, the kids ate it right up and it doesn't take a ton of rehearsal time. And, um, Let's see. John Edmondson is a composer. A lot of younger people don't know anything about. Right. I mean, he's through the um, 60s, 70s and 80s. I mean, he was a very significant composer. Um, and uh, I think Pat Michaud brought him up to Hamden Academy yeah, yeah. and they commissioned a piece and so forth. Very nice cat. Mm -hmm. Very nice guy. All right. Here is Winchester March by John Edmondson. <laughs> The ballad that we put on here is definitely almost into the grade three level. I think the amount of chromaticism. This is Solvig's song from Pierre Gwin's Pierre Gwin's Suite by Edvard Grieg, but also Duke Ellington did it did it the Pierre Gwin's Suite. So if you do this arrangement, you can have them listen to Grieg and Ellington. It's just such great romantic music. I think from a uh, technical and rehearsal standpoint, I've had a couple of eighth grade bands that could tackle this as their fourth um, as their focus piece. The first couple of rehearsals would be tough, you know, like yeah. fingernails on a chalkboard as they're trying right. to read their way through F minor. And this, this, so this is Johnny Vinson, who is a great writer. And, um, you know, it is a MIDI recording, but I like that it uses the parallel minor and major. So it's F minor and then F major kind of alternating very similarly to the original piece. Right. A high school band would have, um, quicker success. I would yep. say. Yep. Yeah. But still the amount of expressive quality. So like, it's good. If it's good enough for Duke Ellington and Grieg, it's good enough for me. I'll say mm -hmm. that F minor um, trumpet section melody in the beginning, expressive chromaticism. Middle section is in three, four and F major works to teach parallel major. And it goes minor, then major, then minor and has three percussion parts. So you can double the mallet part if you want to. Um, it also has dotted eighths and sixteenths, mm -hmm. which is important because kids will sometimes treat that almost like swing aid note, D ta da ta da instead of D da 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 get them to learn how to subdivide yep. on that dotted eighth. And there's actually double stops in the timpani part too, which is kind of cool. Here is Solvig Song, arranged by Johnny Vincent. <laughs>
All right. So with Winchester March and Solvik's song, we now have a very kid-friendly piece by Roland Barrett called Arabian Dances. Um, F major, B flat major, clarinet solo, and a short flute solo in the beginning. Five percussion parts and super important. Kids just love this piece. The melodies passed around. Lots of clapping harmonic minor scale starting on the five, right? So it's like one flat two major three four sound. And it's a closure, closer for sure. Yeah, there's some uh, occasional chromatic notes, but um, present nice teaching moments. Um, trills in the woodwinds. You mentioned the clapping. Kids always are into that. Um, active rhythms in the tempo change. Kids totally will get into that. Yeah. You know, they, um, and several key changes, but all very doable. I, to me, this is a grade four piece in the body of a grade two. <laughs> like, you know, it has that intensity and kids just love it. And, you know, you'll have kids go through high school and go, my favorite piece ever was this piece I did in middle school. Right. Yeah. So here's Arabian Dances by Roland Barrett. you my band would rush the end of that that's for sure with, with all the clapping but what i love about that woodwind line is that it has the all those trills but has flat next to it so you have to teach them that that doesn't mean the note above but it's the chromatic note above well i think any any younger group would have that same issue at the end the kids are into it so much that it takes off like a racehorse so if you get on that like from day one with mm-hmm. the kids and just have them totally focused on on watching so again winchester march solvig song and arabian dance oh sorry yeah arabian dances by barrett like that's that's a great set in the grade two level you have some easier some harder and some stuff that's for the kids for sure um again but you can mix and match anyway you could go and do kvetchers and salvation is created and then you could do arabian or you could do you know um Kvetchers and Solvig song and then terracotta warriors like these are all interchangeable uh, anyway last three pieces on this set um, it's going to start with a piece my wife loves and i've done as well um alamo march by carl king arranged by jim swearingen yeah done this several times um great way to introduce the kids to, to carl king i mean everybody's familiar with Sousa, and again we don't play enough Sousa with, with our students mm-hmm. and carl king and james swearingen he's he's knocked this out of the park he's i i don't know how many carl king marches yeah and they're all they're all excellent uh cut time traditional march format 
could work as a concert opener or a higher grade level ensemble. Um, you wouldn't have to spend too much time in rehearsal with it. And it's another piece. You do it as a warm up or something and then put it in the folder and just have it there. You might perform it once. And if your kids have learned about cut time, but they need a piece to to use it in, this is a great piece sure. to do that. Um, B flat major, so it goes to E flat on the trio, and it's I feel like I said cut time. Thickly scored, so not super exposed. There is no break strain uh, or dogfight. The trio is the final strain. Yeah, I think for all the Carl King marches, this is probably on the easier level of all yep. of them. So. Yep. Big four is also one of those that's like that too. Um, and again, Carl King's funny because he was a euphonium player and he he quit, to travel to play with the circus. So his euphonium parts are usually pretty good too. So, you know, what we're doing right now with the one ensemble is the big cage march. Have you mm-hmm. heard that one? Oh yes. It's like the Fennell version is at 200 beats a minute and that's slow because the one on pepper is like 280. It takes this. So we're doing, cause we have a really good low, low section. And uh, anyway, I digress. Here is uh, Alamo March by Carl King arranged by Jim Spargent. Okay, so the next piece, pun intended, is a real gift. This is Frank to Kelly. This is probably, this is in my top five pieces of all time. And yes, it's a grade two. This is called a, sh- a Shaker Gift Song or Here, Take This Lovely Flower. This is, um, it's sold under the title a Shaker Gift Song as well as it's the third movement um, called Here, Take This Lovely Flower from four Shaker Gift Songs by Frank to Kelly. It's the same piece. Um, it teaches slow six, eight, well, I guess medium six, eight, it's not fast six, eight, but it's two beats per bar until the end. The phrasing is amazing. You can use it for any grade level, um, two and up. It's simple music. That's just gorgeous. Yeah. It's like we said before, it's a grade two, technically grade five or six musically yeah. that that's very, very doable. Um, for higher level ensembles, especially, you know, especially if you've got a group that's been exposed to song for friends, by Larry Dane and the, in the younger grades, and you're ready to move on to something. This is only not even two and a half minutes. Yep. So it's um, not going to take up a lot of your t- rehearsal time. For people who don't know it, the four shaker songs by Tekeli is a grade three. And if you have a small percussion section and some, some decent soloists, that's a great piece. And this is just the four, the third movement of those four. That's such great music. Here is uh, take this lovely flower by Frank Tekeli. <laughs>
I could have rehearsed that piece uh, all day. All right. So we were talking our this this the three 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 pieces we're going to use. This actually is a shorter set. So if you had a P, uh, group that maybe was going out for the first time and you maybe had 20 minutes to play, but you only wanted 10 minutes worth of music or whatever, this each one of these is three minutes or under. Um, so you'd have less than 10 minutes worth of music. You could also do this in a different order. You could start with this next piece as like a fanfare opener and end with the march. You could even put a fourth piece in here and have it as part of a four piece set. So this, um, before we get to it though, I just want to remind people, this is a Thursday episode. That's kind of opposite of the normal ones that are going to be on that are on Mondays. Um, and there are four more past this. So each for the next four Thursdays, you'll see and hear this come out with. So next week is going to be another version of grade one repertoire. And then the following week, grade, grade two and all that. So I hope people are getting something out of this. Um, this is American Declaration by Randall Standridge. This is listed as a 1.5, and my wife recommended this piece. So, of course, I will put it on. Um, it's a fanfare, an overture in B flat and E flat, and it uses quotes from Americana songs like Simple Gifts. You have to listen, but they're there Yankee Doodle and America. Uh, six percussion parts, super versatile, could be used at any time of the year to start the program as well as. Anything. Yeah, I think it's important. And I've learned this the hard way as I've you come into my senior years, I assume that people know tunes that I knew. Yankee Doodle. You know, yeah, the patriotic tunes or even pop tunes from the 60s and 70s. I make a suggestion and I get the stare like crickets. What, what tune? Yeah, it's like, okay, old dude. Um, but, to, you know, it's important to teach the, the American heritage of uh, folk songs, you know, get, get, get it out there. And we just talked a minute ago about you might have that high school group that, you know, it's okay, but um, might have attention span issues mm -hmm. this 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 set would work perfectly um because they, they'll play all the notes but you don't have to invest a lot of time yep. in a rehearsal where you might lose them you could use it on a pops concert you could use it as part of a patriotic concert it could be a fit like this piece is super versatile and again your percussion section needs to be able to bring it mm -hmm. yes yep so thanks for listening everybody here's the last piece uh american declaration by randall standridge We sincerely appreciate you taking your valuable time and listening to the Growing Band Director podcast. Your students are very lucky to have a band director like you. If you have any suggestions for episode topics or think you have an area of expertise to share on a show with us, please reach out. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to help spread the word, please give us a five-star review and tell your band director friends to subscribe as well. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, our YouTube channel, and wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening to the Growing Band Director. See you next week.